how to use the moment of inertia and angular velocity in hand-to-hand -hand fighting. Now, let us see. Let it be axis Z. We'll rotate it in this direction, and that will be its length. Now let it be axis Z, and the object will be rotated like this. Let us see it from the end, or better say, the middle of it. It is all the same. What I was going to say, in this case, the moment of inertia is close to zero. In this, or that case, the moment of inertia equals one twelfth of m multiplied by L squared. How much is the moment of inertia in this case? It's one third of m multiplied by L squared. Do you see what happens? It is about the very object you have in your hands. You work with it right here, right now, on the floor or in moving. Now if we take an Archimedean spiral and consider it on the plane, on the plane using a system of coordinates, we can see that here is the radius is large, here it is smaller. Right here it is the smallest. Let it be the first, the second and the third radii. What are we going to consider here? In this case, the moment of inertia is the maximum. The and the angular velocity? Minimum. Minimum. Now what we see here? Now what do we see here? The large radius. The first radius is maximal. That is a result here. What about the angular velocity? Minimum. What can we tell about this radius? Let there be the first. The first, the first. This one is the second. The second moment of inertia is lower. It is lower than the first one. Am I right? I am. What about velocity? The second velocity will be higher than the first velocity. Right? Now I continue. The second radius we have here is smaller than the first one. Now we look at this one. If this one is zero, then the moment of inertia is approximately zero or minimum. Yes? Minimum. What about the angular velocity? Maximum. Finally, the third radius is minimal. This is what you see. This is what you do right now. That's about a plane. However, let us put a focal distance or a focus here. Or there, it doesn't matter. Let it be here. Let it be the focus. Now if we connect these points, what do you see? That's a paradox. What makes the velocity grow? If we're talking about velocity, what do we mean? We're talking about a transformer, a reducer or the ability to operate at a higher speed thanks to this angular velocity. As you can see, this is a reducer. Let us consider a cone. Let us draw a cone, like this. This is the diameter, this is the cone. Now look here. If I add this line, we get a gearbox.
Do you see it? What I mean is that our arms, our systems, everything we have perform in this very role. We can accelerate or slow down. We can do anything we want, if we know how. If we don't, all this trumpery will do harm and drag us down. That is the reason to look into books. Leaf through them. Get the idea. In this case, as we look into it, compared to our work, you have to notice. Any hunters among us? Anyone who is no stranger to hunt? What is a paradox? A paradox? Do you mean the definition? Of course I mean the definition of a paradox. It's an incompatibility, I guess. Guys, what do you mean by incompatibility? On the contrary, so? That's a rifled barrel, a rifle. I asked this guy, I did not ask you, Janeka. That's what hunters have. Smoothbore barrels are usually made, rifled, by making rifling of 12 centimeters length, starting from the end of the bore. That is the field of rifling. Thanks to this, smoothbore barrel is made into a rifle. That's what I wanted to say. There will not be a complete cone as someone else, but a paradox of a kind. We have to deal with it. The cone is not complete. It's called translated. The books that the guy has brought us is about... Could you please remind us the name of it? The descriptive geometry and sketching? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Exactly. The, descri the descriptive geometry and sketching. Yes, right, right, yes. This, the descriptive geometry and sketching. Now, we can see that it is about a paradox. The correspondence of these points might not be full, but partial. Partial. It works thanks to velocity. Ruling, second, and all are designed in the books nicely. Lines of contact, points of contact, everything is in it. That is the reason I advise you to look into it. The books I presented give you the bigger picture of things. Look into the textbooks of a sixth grade for high school. You'll find the information there. What we saw here. We'll work later. Before the break, for lunch, you saw me demonstrating this. Now you say, how do you do this? Do it again. Who saw it can say it is so. I did the very thing. Everything is in the books. Not in foreign ones. These work, this work is ours, Russian. That's what's in our people, what's in us, what is taught in our schools. Any questions? Stand still. I'm going to hit you. Now, look what's going on. Do not turn away. That is what I was showing you. I hold it here and start the movement. It's at one twelfth of the mass by L squared. Did you get it? Now, if I grab the middle of the stick, I can hit with both ends, but... Wait. I mix them up. This one is one twelfth. This one is one third of the mass multiplied by L squared. Got it? Now if I start moving, you will see the paradox we've discussed, or this truncated pyramid. Got it? Got it. What kind of movement do I make? For example, I hit him and he defends himself. I attack, he defends. I change the position to a counter-attack him. These are the vital points. Depending on where I exert the forces to this object, to this lever, I can get a mechanism we have discussed. It could be a stick, a gun, or his hand, holding a knife or a stone. Any questions?